Hey guys, I have a really nice nutrient nugget today. That's kind of a fun little story. It comes from one of my favorite books that I'm always talking about. It's called The Pleasure Trap by Dr. Doug Lyle and Alan Goldhammer. Dr. Doug Lyle has some really awesome videos on YouTube, some TED Talks, and I will link one of those down below so you can watch. It's one of my favorites. I mean, it's a mind-blowing. This book is also mind-blowing. I have done another video about a monkey, and you guys can check out the, the monkey story that comes from this book as well. But I just wanted to read a little part to you guys that's just kind of talking about the origin of issues in our society, but it starts out with a little entertaining story. And this might be something that you want to pass along to a family member or somebody that you love that is maybe going through some health troubles or something because it's a really cool way of thinking about all this. So here we go. This comes from page number. 51 and it's called looking for health in all the wrong places in the late 1800s a young Scottish physician was experiencing difficulty in establishing his medical practice with time on his hands the young man turned his remarkable mind to the telling of mysteries and their solutions in contrast to his struggling practice his writing was an immediate and astounding success the young doctor's name was Doyle and his literary creation Sherlock Holmes would become synonymous with deductive genius for generations to come though a fine storyteller with a flair for both humor and drama perhaps Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's greatest talent was his penetrating vision into the nature of human problem-solving in particular Doyle had an uncanny sense for spotting problem-solving blind spots mental biases to which he made sure that the great Holmes was immune indeed a crucial component of Holmes is timeless appeals is ability to make sense out of what less gifted observers might view as insufficient or contradictory evidence. Holmes' special talent is his ability to appreciate the importance of clues that others fail to notice, though their importance is obvious once seen from the proper perspective. Often this requires the great detective to look at the evidence from a viewpoint that is precisely opposite from the one that seems naturally right. One classic Holmes mystery, Silver Blaze, beautifully illustrates this point. In the story, the victim, a resident of the estate, is found one morning on the grounds, having been felled by a blow to the head the previous evening. The evidence strongly suggests that the culprit is a stranger who had been observed on the estate's grounds earlier that same day. The police apprehend the suspect and are intending to charge him with the crime when Holmes intervenes, insisting to the police that they have made a mistake. The case turns on an obscure but key point when, after questioning witnesses, Holmes recognizes a critical fact that others had missed. The estate housed many people, horses, and an alert stable dog. The great Holmes explains to his astounded listeners that the key to the case is the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime. Before he can continue, a listener objects, insisting that the dog did nothing in the nighttime. That was the curious incident, replies Holmes. Holmes explains that the absence of the dog's barking suggested to him that the culprit was known to the manor's hound and could therefore not have been the stranger. This indicated a need to re-examine the evidence from a fresh perspective. Holmes solves the mystery because of his brilliant awareness that the absence of something can be more important than its presence. The truth is often difficult to grasp. The difficulty is the result of a natural human problem-solving blind spot, an innate limitation of our psychology. It's precisely this type of human limitation that Arthur Doyle was so adept at noticing. And it is this type of limitation that results in the majority of our society remaining blind to the key facts regarding their health, though the facts are crystal clear once seen from the proper perspective. I promise this comes to health right now. <laughs> so health mysteries. Millions of people in our country are dying and suffering from a handful of devastating conditions like heart attacks, strokes, congestive heart failure, diabetes, and cancer. These conditions account for three-fourths of our nation's premature deaths and the majority of our collective chronic disability. Yet the culprits in these tragedies have been hard for most people to accurately identify. The evidence for many appears to be contradictory and confusing. Like a Sherlock Holmes mystery, people are puzzled about the causes of their health problems, as well as what to do about them. They look in books, television, internet, and to their doctor, making health information seeking one of our population's primary intellectual pursuits. It's appropriate as our health problems are of epidemic proportion. Unfortunately, most of the expert information is erroneous and misleading. For example, people are often told that the real culprits causing their health problems are their genes. This suggests that any solution to their problems will require medical intervention because their body simply doesn't work properly. If they have high cholesterol, they're told to ingest cholesterol-lowering drugs. If they have high blood pressure, they're encouraged to ingest medications that will lower it. And if they have type 2 diabetes, which is about 95% of all diabetes cases, they're told that their health requires that they utilize medication. In the alternative health arena, the expert suggestions are somewhat different. Herbal remedies, concentrated foodstuffs in the form of pills, vitamin supplements, and other treatments are the standard fare. Similar to conventional thought, such alternative approaches seem to confirm the same unspoken conclusion. The body of a person with a health problem cannot be expected to achieve and sustain a healthy state without adding something. Either by virtue of genetic flaw or because of dietary deficiency, the notion once again is that something's missing. The response to take something for it makes intuitive sense to most people, often encouraging them to continue down a path of self-destruction. Meanwhile, the real culprits are ignored and continue to do their damage unchecked. So the real culprits 
and most modern day health problems are excesses, not deficiencies. It's the subtraction of these excesses that will solve most of the problems, not the addition of medications or supplements. Haha! -ha. Not surprisingly, the subtraction of excess is nearly always more effective at restoring health than is the addition of anything, be it dietary supplements or medication. In atherosclerosis, for example, excess, uh, which is heart disease, excess cholesterol, fat, and protein, mostly in the form of animal products, results in deposits of fatty substances within the cardiovascular system. These deposits clog up the system and contribute to heart attack, stroke, and congestive heart failure. The risk of such vascular diseases is associated with cholesterol levels, which are heavily influenced by our dietary cholesterol intake. Cholesterol is found in all foods of animal origin, including meat, fish, fowl, eggs, and dairy products. Plant-based foods contain zero cholesterol. So research has shown that the subtraction of these dietary excesses is the most effective way to manage the problem. Sherlock Holmes was fond of explaining to his sidekick, Dr. Watson, that the connections he made were elementary. Of course, nothing could have been farther from the truth. Although obvious, once viewed from the proper perspective, the solution to a Sherlock Holmes mystery is an exciting moment for the reader, as Holmes brilliantly maneuvers those present into seeing the facts in an accurate new light. Grasping that the major key to health is mostly about subtraction and not addition is a major conceptual leap. Although seemingly simple, this connection is perhaps the most difficult in principle in modern health science to understand. Once seen from the proper perspective, it's simple, but achieving this understanding can be a challenging task. A very interesting way of looking at all this and I'm always trying to find new ways to explain it to people I have friends asking me all the time I want to get healthy what do I do and when I try to say you have to change the way you eat I mean just to make that leap that eating is the cause of my issues um, I mean that's a leap for so many people just to say yeah the way that I eat causes my heart disease or the way that I eat causes my diabetes. The way that I eat is causing me to be overweight in a way that I can't easily lose weight again. When you are a nutritarian and when you're following this plan, it's easy to lose weight again. Your whole entire physiology changes. The way that your body handles stuff and processes things just completely different. So you start to have a lot more effective action when you actually take action you know you try to eat some nutritarian food for just say two or three weeks and you have these massive results that you could have never gotten unless you were doing a nutritarian plan you know it's a very difficult concept to to make that leap to as he says in the book but really once you can believe that the excess of certain foods and certain things that you're eating is the thing that's actually causing the problem not the fact that you have to add something to fix it because you're lacking something because that's not it our bodies have the ability to heal and to get better and to use food properly. We just have to be able to give it the right stuff to start. So I always like to use this book as a companion to Eat to Live and the concepts in here because it's so about the psychology of it all and helping us understand why we're stuck in this pleasure trap that, you know, I know I was stuck in the pleasure trap. I was completely addicted to food for the longest time. Now it's so much easier for me to just go about my day, you know, not having to be controlled by my impulses when it comes to food. So consider it. Um, check out this book if you can. It's really, really amazing. I have a link for it down below. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please let me know by liking it, commenting down below, thoughts, questions. Um, if you, you know, just let me know if you liked it or not. Also, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and that's super help from, helpful for me too. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you got something out of this and I will see you next time. Bye!